Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're talking about Bitcoin news today. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki is talking about Bitcoin and he said that Bitcoin is the people's money. That's an unusual statement for a billionaire to make. If you're not familiar with Robert Kiyosaki, he wrote the books Rich Dad, Poor Dad and has a whole line of things. He has an excellent game called Rich Dad, Poor Man Game. Um, it's kind of like Monopoly, but it's a little bit closer to real life. And the emphasis of that game is to teach people how to take a regular life with regular income and on the side build up enough income and everything else in order to find your own financial independence and become an owner of multiple small businesses. So interesting game. Uh, also, we're going to talk about the Bitcoin halvening. It's in the news. But the big thing about the Bitcoin halvening being in the news is, is the, the Bitcoin halvening going to act like a, a slingshot? You remember those old rubber, the slingshots where you put a small rock into it and you pulled back the rubber band? Um, is the Bitcoin happening? The happening has always acted kind of like a slingshot to the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin, 18 to 24 months after each happening, has always historically hit a new all-time high. Well, is this happening going to be like pulling that slingshot a little bit farther, a little bit tighter? In other words, is it going to have a greater and more significant impact on the price of Bitcoin? We're going to talk about that. Also in the news is France, Nigeria, and India. All three of these countries have bullish, very, very bullish Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news. So let's get right into it. Uh, our channel, this video, and our YouTube channel is about ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. And it's for cryptocurrency beginners, it's for traders, it's for anybody who's interested in investing in Bitcoin and making money. So can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really helps us out. It makes a big difference with the algorithms. So I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So you're going to get a lot of my opinion and some interesting facts from today's news. So Bitcoin likely to become the new normal for Generation Z. Since the start of the coronavirus pandemic, assets, bonds, stocks, and fiat currencies across the world have dropped substantially in value. But as the crisis deepens, people from different generations are starting to realize the true value of Bitcoin. Robert Kiyosaki, the author of the international bestseller Rich Dad, Poor Dad, has promoted Bitcoin for two days in a row on Twitter. Robert called Bitcoin the people's money on April 1 on Twitter. He restated it again today, which was actually yesterday. So this was written uh, a day ago. The people should save gold, God's money, or Bitcoin, people's money, due to rampant money printing reducing the value of the U.S. dollar. And so this is what he said on the first day. Are you nuts? And lesson five was about saving money. Are you nuts? Why save money when the, when the quantum easing Fed counterfeiting is printing trillions of dollars of fake dollars, 82 billion a month, 125 billion a day? Why save when Z ZERP, zero interest policy pays Losers, zero. Save gold, God's money, or Bitcoin, people's money. Now, Sylvan Sorrell, editor in Bitcoin We Trust, agrees that Generation Y and Z are the most likely to have a positive opinion of Bitcoin. In a blog for the startup this week, he pointed out that millennials feel a deep sense of liberation regarding Bitcoin. Those who will be curious to find out what the current monetary and financial system was like will be shocked. They will wonder how previous generations were able to accept the fact a few people systematically decided to devalue what the majority of the people owned. And that's exactly what happens. Government decides to print a whole bunch of money which devalues the money 
and that and the money is what the majority of the people own and so he raises a, a really really good question what are they gonna think the tweets from Robert Kiyosaki went viral among the crypto community with many thinking thanking Robert for raising awareness about what Bitcoin stands for this led to some pointing out how different generations could respond to the current crisis with one person saying, simply do your own gold standard. Make some remarkable percentage of your savings in gold. If you're a Gen Z or Y or the younger half of X, do it as a retirement plan. So the fallout from the coronavirus is hitting anything and everything in the economy. And, and Robert is making a really good point here about how all of this stimulus, all of this trillions of dollars that the global economy, I mean, it's not just the U.S., it's around the world, are pumping into each of their different economies, into the European economy, into the U.S. economy, into um, Australia and India and everywhere else. They're pumping huge amounts of money into those economies because of the global pandemic. As a result, it's going to cause everything to go down in value. Everything will be worth less. It may cause a global recession, possibly a global depression. It's likely that it's going to affect virtually everybody on the planet or most people on the planet in a negative way. The result of that is people are going to be looking for some kind of safe haven. They're going to be looking for, uh, now a lot of people are not going to buy gold. They may not have access to gold. Even if they do buy gold, how do you trade gold? How do you go and buy a loaf of bread or a cup of coffee with gold? It's, it's not an easy thing to do. Whereas with Bitcoin, it is definitely much easier to do all of the above. Not only can you trade cash to Bitcoin reasonably easy, but there's plenty of different exchanges that allow you to deposit your crypto and actually will give you a Visa or a MasterCard and you can use that credit card. It acts like a debit card and it just, as you, as you use the credit card at different, you know, you can use a Visa card any, most, almost anywhere. You can use a MasterCard almost anywhere and whenever you use it, it actually reduces the amount of cryptocurrency you own and uses a cryptocurrency to pay in cash to the person that you're buying stuff with. So the person that you bought the cup of coffee from will get their $3 or $4 or whatever amount you're paying for your coffee. They get the cash and you have a small amount, about $3 or $4 worth of Bitcoin deducted out of your Bitcoin account. So it works out really well for everybody. And instead of your Bitcoin constantly losing money like the the fiat money, U.S. dollars and, and euro and everything else, uh, it, it, it has a likelihood of holding its value much, much better. So what to expect when you're expecting the blockchain happening? Many industry experts hold varied expectations for Bitcoin's price following the Brock reward happening in May, pro proving 2020 is anything but mundane. On both prior occasions, Bitcoin surged to a new all-time high within 12 months, with the latest coming in December 2017, the, when the price reached $20,000. So the last time Bitcoin went through a halvening was about 18 months prior to December 2017, and after the, that halvening, Bitcoin reached an all-time high of $20,000, which was followed by a massive decline. Um, in an email on March 10th. Okay, so so Bitcoin hit the $20,000 and then immediately after the $20,000 price point, Bitcoin had a, a, a steep decline and it eventually came all the way down to about $3,000 and then since that, that, that $3,000 was hit in December 2018, January 2019, and it has come back significantly since then. Uh, the recent high was 14,000, and we, I, I'm very bullish. I think it's gonna, we're gonna see some significant numbers past that. Now, this section right here of this article, I'm gonna go into, but if you already understand and know what the happening is, what I'm about to go into is something you already know. 
We're going to do this for the benefit of those that don't know what the halvening is. There's a lot of people that have never heard of a Bitcoin halvening, and so we're going to cover that for them. Block halvings, which occur roughly, now this every four years is specific to Bitcoin or anything that was built off of the Bitcoin code. So the block halvings occur roughly every four years and are a fundamental part of Bitcoin's code. Roughly every 10 minutes, one of the network's miners solves a new block problem and thereby wins a reward that contains a preset number of newly minted Bitcoin. In the early years, Bitcoin's block reward was 50 Bitcoin. Each time the miners added a new block transactions to the chain. In other words, when a new block was solved, because there's a complex mathematical problem that goes into solving those blocks, that ha and the solutions are found about every 10 minutes. Uh, when it takes longer than 10 minutes, they reduce the difficulties. When it starts taking less than 10 minutes, they increase the difficulty. And so the, the system automatically is adjusting itself so that it keeps those blocks created about every 10 minutes for each new block. And when Bitcoin first began, each block rewarded the miner with 50 Bitcoin. But in the first halvening in 2012, that reward was cut from 25 Bitcoin all the way down to 12 and a half Bitcoin. And then in 2017, with the last halvening, it was reduced. Uh, it's current. I'm sorry. It was reduced down to 12 and a half, which is where which is where we're currently at. And the 12 and a half in 2020, and that's coming up in the middle of May, approximately May 11th was the last time, was the date the last time I checked on it. Uh, that's going to get reduced down to 6.25 Bitcoin. And so each time this halvening happens, the miners get half as much Bitcoin as a reward as they did the day or the block prior. Because it happens exactly at 400,000 blocks, which takes about four years for it to process. And so um, the miners are going to make less money as a result of this. And that's one of the things that actually helps to drive the price of Bitcoin up because as the mining gets more and more difficult, it becomes more and more scarce and the scarcity causes the price to go higher. Opinions have varied over time regarding Bitcoin's price relative to block happenings, but the general consensus usually leans towards the asset's price pumping at some point surrounding the event, as was the case with each of the previous halvenings. Twitter crypto analysis Plan B has developed a price model which shows that each halvening causes a Bitcoin supply, a drop in Bitcoin supply, therefore leading to an increase in prices. And their, their price model has been extremely accurate when it came to predicting the price of Bitcoin with previous halvenings. And so everybody that I have a, a lot of respect for when it comes to Bitcoin and Bitcoin analysis have all thought that Plan B's price model is a very strong, a very a reasonably accurate price model. Now, according to that price model, Bitcoin should reach somewhere around $100,000 12 to 18 months after the halvening that's about to occur in the middle of May. Now, my opinion is, is, and I agreed with that up until the whole pandemic and the coronavirus and everything else, and here's where I lie. I kind of agree with Robert Kiyosaki that, that with all of this money flooding into the economies with the likelihood of a, a, a recession, global recession, and probably a global depression where the global economies have been hit hard, hit very hard. And everybody's going to remember this whole thing where um, the stock market dropped 50% out of nowhere and all of the different huge losses through stocks and other assets and people being put out of work and everything else that's happened in the last month or two, I think that that's going to get people, it, it's kind of like a wake-up call. I think a lot of people are going to be looking for alternatives in terms of where they can invest in and where they can put their investments. 
And so I think the end result is that that the Bitcoin halvening is going to skyrocket the price of Bitcoin more than it had with previous halvenings. And so I think the next 12 to possibly 24 months, we should see Bitcoin having some spectacular uh, returns, spectacular growth, um, and, and everything else. And you know what? The other articles that we're about to go into where we're looking at what's happening in France, Nigeria, and India also lean towards a similar conclusion as those countries are are getting heavily interested and heavily invested into cryptocurrency. So let's get into it. Here's what France is talking about. France makes big moves towards a digital euro currency. So France's central bank uh, is, is building a digital currency and France's central bank wants to discover the benefits and use cases for a digital euro. The bank will conduct a series of experiments with the CBDCs in collaboration with other entities. The testing will begin this summer. France's central bank has announced its plans to launch an experimental program to test a digital euro in settlement procedures. Qualified institutions are also invited to participate. According to the bank's statement published on March 27th, the program will be used to evaluate the potential of decentralized technologies as well as discover solid use cases for central bank digital currencies. The initiative has three main goals. Firstly, to demonstrate if how CBDC can be used to settle interbank transactions. Secondly, to determine what benefits a digital euro can present. Finally, to conduct a detailed analysis of the potential effects of introducing a CBDC on the financial stability, monetary policy, and the regulatory environment, says the document. To conduct these tests, the central bank has invited all qualified and interest entities to take part. Per the announcement, applications must be established within the European Union or in a state party to the EU area agreement. And so uh, this is a very interesting development as France and the European Union seem to be getting very serious about the possibility of introducing a central bank digital currency. Imagine that, a central bank digital currency for the European dollars. Wow, that'll, that'll rock the cryptocurrency industry in a significant way. Let's talk about Nigeria. So Nigeria is launching its first Bitcoin ATMs. Now, the ATM was installed in the Daisy Lounge and Bar in the state of Lagos by Block Stable, Block Stale BTM. It plans to start 30 more terminals across the country. Daniel Adekinul, the founder and executive, chief executive of the company, said, despite all the legal uncertainties about cryptocurrencies in Nigeria, Nigerians happen to be the highest crypto traders in Africa. So let's dig into this further. However, the Nigerian market is still thriving despite some issues. According to Google Trends, Nigeria constantly tops the Google searches for Bitcoin and drives two times the traffic than the second-ranked country, Austria. Interestingly, three of the top five countries in the list are African, including South Africa and Guyana. That this indicates a rising trend in African countries to learn, adopt, and uh, become more educated about Bitcoin in their daily lives. So one of the things that we need to keep in mind, the, the, there's 7 point, uh, I don't remember the exact number, it's 7.5, 7.7 billion people on the planet. Out of 7.7 billion people, 5.1 or 5.2 billion of them own smartphones. And so out of five, five out of every seven people alive today have a smartphone. And so one of the things that's happening in Nigeria that has made cryptocurrency so interesting is they're using their smartphones and they're transacting with local people. And so they're using things like local Bitcoins in order to buy and sell things using Bitcoin and their smartphone. And so the result is, is that South Africa as a country 
has a very, very high interest in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency um, because of the way they're using that. And you might ask, well, why are they using Bitcoin? Why are they using cryptocurrency? It has a lot to do with their banking system. If you live in the United States like I do, it's really easy for me to just run down and get a bank account and set up a Visa or a MasterCard. Um, in fact, I have companies that send me applications for credit cards all the time. And they're constantly wanting us to get a new credit card. So in the U.S., all of the banking and credit cards and all of that kind of stuff is very easy, and 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 we have an enormous a, a number of companies that are trying to battle for our do dollars. In South America and in uh, South Africa, that's not the case. Uh, banking is not as easy for the average person to get into, and when people do get involved in banking, there is sometimes a problem with corruption. Um, and so you don't want to put your money somewhere where somebody's likely to steal it from. So the end result is they're, they're open, they're interested, they're wanting to learn about alternatives so that they don't have to worry about risking their wealth from being taken from them when it should not have been. That's why there's such a, a strong use case of Bitcoin in South Africa as well as other parts of the world. Bitcoin is being adopted far faster in other countries than it is in the United States, and that's because it helps solve hair-on-fire problems that the United States doesn't have a strong need for. Now, with the whole pandemic and people staying home from work and lots of people losing their jobs, I think that's going to increase that use case of cryptocurrency on a global basis. So not only will Nigeria have a stronger interest in it, but the United States and other countries will increase their interest, such as India. So Paxful survey suggests forthcoming Bitcoin boom in India. India's sentiment on cryptocurrency has been strong even before the ban lift. So what was the ban lift? Well, in 2018, the Central Bank of India decided that cryptocurrency was a bad thing. Well, certainly, cryptocurrency threatens the banking industry, and so it would be a natural thing for the central banks to dislike it. And so the central banks set up regulations that pretty much made cryptocurrency uh, illegal, at least from the banking institutions in the countries of India in the different country states in India. Well, as a result, there were several cryptocurrency companies that decided to sue the banking regulators and took the court case all the way to the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court made a decision on this about four or six weeks ago. Today is um, April 3rd, 2020. And right now is 11.42 a.m. And so they made a decision, uh, the Supreme Court made a decision that the bank regulators had gone too far, that they had exceeded their authority, and that the laws did not support the actions that they had taken. And so the Supreme Court of India removed the ban. Now, of those polled, many see digital assets as a legitimate path to financial freedom. And so it's interesting that the population in India sees cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the others as a, as a route, as a potential route to achieve financial freedom. 90% of crypto enthusiasts hold Bitcoin in India, and cryptocurrency space is a top priority for respondents looking to invest new money. And so it's, it's quite interesting. The attitude in India is they're very hungry for cryptocurrency. And now that that ban has been removed, um, it looks like we're going to see some significant changes. So India has recently seen a lift on its cryptocurrency ban, opening a world of opportunities except accessible to a population of over 1 billion people. Prior to the ban lift, and according to recent Paxful data, Indian sentiment around digital currency was contrary to that of its government. In other words, India was interested in cryptocurrency, the government was putting a ban on it and was shutting it down. 
According to the March survey, 93.8% of respondents invested in crypto prior to the lifting of the ban in 2020, with 90% holding Bitcoin and 44% holding Ethereum. More than 75% of respondents rely on cryptocurrency to easily transfer money, bypassing a legacy banking system considered to be corrupt. So you can see here, um, when it comes to purchasing, the respondents have already purchased, uh, already invested in cryptocurrency. 75% of the people in this particular poll already had invested in cryptocurrency, and 25% had not invested in cryptocurrency. Now, the length of their investments, the time frame in which the respondents first invested in cryptocurrency, 56.8% of them invested in the last year, between 2018 and 2019, with only 6% of them investing in 2020 and small amounts investing prior to 2018. Roughly two-thirds of the respondents answered that crypto was the path to financial freedom. In a world where peer-to-peer -peer economics has driven financial inclusion, the survey results fell in line with a global sentiment that cryptocurrency has the ability to provide financial access to anyone who cannot participate in the traditional banking system. The majority of respondents in India concurred with that sentiment. And so there's a global sentiment in uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency that is on the positive side. Now, when you look at the number of addresses that are used globally for Bitcoin, we're, we're talking approximately somewhere around, you know, a very, very small number, less than half a percent of the world's population is currently involved in cryptocurrency, and yet five out of seven people in the world could be involved in cryptocurrency because of smartphones. And so it looks very, very plausible that we're going to see a dramatic increase globally in the number of people that are using cryptocurrency. Now, as I said earlier, this is, a, this is not investment advice. This is my opinion. And so I'm just showing you some information to help you understand why I drew the opinion. I came, concluded and came to the opinion that I have. I want to inform you of the ideas that have informed my conclusions so that you can draw your own conclusions. But as always, when it comes to investing in anything, especially cryptocurrency, it's a very risky thing and you may want to seek the advice of a professional. If you do choose to seek the advice of a professional, I do have a, uh, a video out there so that you can ask your professional advisor, your investment advisor, uh, pertinent questions to try and discover how deep their knowledge of cryptocurrency actually is. Because a lot of financial advisors will advise you to stay away from cryptocurrency, but the real question is, is, well, how much knowledge do they actually have to be giving you that actual advice? And so that might be a good video for you to check out. I'll put that in the comments below so that you can connect up to that video. In conclusion, uh, well, let's talk about this. The future of cryptocurrency in India looks bright with 40% of those surveyed declaring an intention to invest in cryptocurrency over any other investment option. Stocks and bonds followed at 30%, real estate and gold lagging at 14%. With crypto enthusiasm strong in India, Paxful CEO Ray Youssef said he was especially interested to see how they utilize peer-to-peer -peer finance now and into the future. So that's our program for today. How can I be of service to you? I would love to help you in any way that I can. Please leave your questions, your comments, your thoughts in the comment section below, especially on the YouTube channel. In the meantime, I hope that you will like, subscribe, and hodl. Have a fantastic day.